Okay, here's my talk on it's just biology. Um, basically, it's going to be about sex and helping out people that you actually know. So, uh, where's my background on this? I did teach a lot of human biology at a university in Florida with a lot of sexy people. So let's begin off. Anybody here that's into evolution or uh, not into evolution, you might want to go outside. Evolutionists, stay in. People that are all into, you know, creationism that just happened in seven days, go ahead and take that cigarette bake right now. Uh, because we are going to talk a little bit about how human beings are animals. We basically came out of this primordial sludge here and started getting the backbone and all the other groovy stuff. And uh, that little star at the top, that's Charles Darwin. Uh, he's kind of like a personal hero of mine and hopefully some of yours too. I don't know. Or maybe you guys like MMA fighters. I don't know. So anyway, the purpose of being an animal is basically you want to have the longevity of our genetic code. Uh, how do we do this? One, by survival, not be eaten by dinosaurs, uh, even though dinosaurs didn't really exist with human beings, and also passing on the genetic code with reproduction. But as animals, we can go ahead and step back because as human beings, we have this ability to reason that supposedly se separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom. Except when that ability to reason comes in conflict with S-E-X, sex. You guys know bad decisions get made sometimes. So it's in our genetic programming that we like who we like. There's all kinds of different markers out there. Uh, the main one I always talk about is symmetry. You see someone and they think they're beautiful, the like eyes are the same, like, you know, distance away from the median and everything. Uh, basically, these expressions of our symmetry mean that people are healthy and they're going to have like better genes in the long run and everything. So healthy bodies are hotter for a reason because it relates to fertility. And if you're a healthy body, then that basically means you're going to be able to have babies right away. And this isn't just us, this is the rest of the animal kingdom too. And here we have uh, deer. I mean, you can definitely see symmetry in antlers and everything. So female deer know what's going on, and it's really easy to see with these guys, and they go ahead and they fight and everything. And in humans, we do it with guys that have like broad shoulders and swagger. And in females, they don't quite swagger with their shoulders, they swagger with their hips, right? Um, Jessica Alba here is like considered the ideal female. This came out like in 2007. Her hip to like a waist ratio was considered perfect, close to the golden rule. Um, but then we get to the whole thing about why are some women able to be a little more in tune to their reproduction than guys? Sexual reproduction is something that's a little bit more energetically uh, costly for females than it is for men. Because think about it, if a woman goes ahead and hooks up with a guy at a bar or something, a guy can just walk away from it, right? A woman, she has like nine months of consequences. So hopefully nobody gets too crazy at happy hour afterwards, but there are consequences to when you hook up. However, women don't always think about this. You guys have seen the show, right? I'm not saying these girls were good from the beginning, but stuff does happen. And for female, especially teenagers, uh, they're hitting their sexual prime, and you don't quite make the good decisions, and so that's really where the animal overcomes being human. But teenagers, they're kind of stupid anyway, period, right? <laughs> you guys probably remember that when you hit 13, 12, or whatever you got, became sexual mature, all of a sudden you're fighting with your parents, right? And it isn't because all of a sudden you're being super rebellious, you're just testing boundaries because that's what human animals do. We're testing our boundaries because we're testing where we are in the pack dominance thing. We're not the wolf pack, we're more like a primate pack. And we're basically setting our patterns for when we go out into the world. Think about when you go out to college, you go out beyond that, and maybe you eventually go on to want to find a mate. So basically, we go ahead and test against our parents, but we don't want to have sex with our parents because you, right? <laughs> uh, but you're really setting the template for who you do want to have sex with later on in life. So the rule is um, don't do it with your parents. You can do it with other people, but not your parents or those related directly to you. So this brings on to Freud. Everybody talks about the Oedipus complex, right? Tell me about your mother. Another ew, but it kind of might relate to we do test that boundary issue with our pack dominance that we're learning at one time or another. So there are all kinds of evolutionary leapfrogs that I think about, and gold diggers, man, they're right on it, right? Uh, they are looking for resource dominance. Homosexuals, um, I'm sorry, but I know a lot of gay people that want to have kids and pass on the genetic code. I'm sure you guys do too. And then there's altruism, people that are just kind for the sake of being kind. Uh, these monkeys here, I'm sorry, do you want a sick monkey near you in your pack? They're probably like cleaning that monkey off to make sure they're not going to get sick themselves. So altruism, I don't quite believe in it, but people do, do, do nice things, I guess, for community's sake. So I guess it comes back to we are animals, we have this ability to reason, we tie it up with who we support in our community and how we want to support each other. Uh, but generally, you're going to be closer to people and do more things that are related to your genetic code. The further you are from your genetic code, not so much. So with that, an altruistic happy birthday to my friend Jen Veronic. She's in the audience over there. Yeah.
And um, my husband and I are moving to Denver. Anybody know about any two-bedroom places? Go ahead and let us know. We want to be part of your community. Thanks. Bye.